So in this video, we're going to look at an interesting topic. People have asked for a bit more information on twin turbo setup. So we're looking really at the parallel twin turbo setup, the inline twin turbo setups and sequential turbo charging. So there's various ways of getting two turbos to work. So the basic idea of a turbo is it compresses the air and allows you to get more air into the engine. You can burn more fuel and make more power. So the idea is that adding an extra turbo is twice as good. But there's quite a few complexities. There's a few myths and misunderstandings. There are quite a few different variations on how to get a twin turbo setup working. And just looking at what manufacturers have done can give us clues as to how to achieve this in our own projects. Maybe if we've got a naturally aspirated engine and we're looking to convert it, or a more likely scenario is we've got one turbo already and we want to upgrade to a twin turbo. Perhaps we've seen that the manufacturer of our car has actually produced a twin turbo variant of our engine. And we're just a little bit jealous of the power that they're offering. So let's look at the twin turbos, how they are set up, how they work, and the merits of each of the different setups. This video is really just an introduction to the various types of twin turbo setups and parallel turbos and sequential turbocharging. But once you've grasped the basic principles, we can then go off and explore the more complex setups that different manufacturers have used and start exploring the pros and cons and the merits of each of these. So we basically have sequential, parallel or staged. So the easiest one to explain really is the parallel turbo, where you've got two turbos and they're working in parallel. They're both coming on stream at the same time, they're compressing the air and they're pushing it back into the engine. There's a parallel turbo setup which typically requires two throttle bodies, so effectively each turbo is feeding the other side of the engine. So in a V6 or a V8 configuration, the exhaust side on one part of the engine would be feeding the intake side on the other part of the engine, which helps to keep things nicely balanced, but that's not always the case. There are some engines where both turbos just feed in through one throttle and that air is then forced into the engine. So I think Audi used this on one of their turbo engines, but there's a lot of issues and problems that come about with different setups on parallel turbos and you'll find that often advantages you get are outweighed by disadvantages. So what you choose really depends on your engine, whether it's a V configuration, whether it's a V4, V6, a V8 or just an inline four engine and really what your power gains are and which turbos you're actually choosing for that setup. So just Generally, manufacturers will split the engine. So if you've got a six cylinder or eight cylinder engine, half of the cylinders will feed one turbo and the other half will feed the other turbo. So that's fairly easy to set up. You've got consistent flow rates between the engine if the engine's in good condition. You'll start having problems, obviously, if some of the cylinders are down on pressure or there's some kind of boost leak or one turbo is not quite working as effectively as the other. So you need to be fairly fastidious in matching everything across the engine for that set up to work but it's relatively easy to set up and it kind of emulates what manufacturers have done with the twin scroll turbo setup but it just allows you to have the two turbo units. So what are the advantages of having two turbos instead of one? Well, you can have smaller turbos. So surely smaller turbos make less power. Well, actually having smaller turbos means they spool up more quickly. Generally speaking, there's exceptions. I know I'm gonna get comments of people just pointing out all the different exceptions and I certainly welcome that. Let me know your opinions and what you've discovered and pass on your knowledge so we can all share and learn. But a large turbo tends to require more exhaust gas to rotate it to build up the pressure. So having a large turbo can create quite a lot of lag at the bottom end and then loads of power when it finally kicks in. But having the two turbos and the smaller turbos can actually bring that power band down a little so you've got more power at the low end. And manufacturers have used this to emulate the feel of a naturally aspirated engine when they've actually decreased the capacity and just added twin turbos to it. So another complexity is controlling the exhaust gas flows into two turbos. So exhaust gases don't tend to flow that consistently. There's pulses coming out of the engine. The turbos are generally sighted at different distances, different positions. So the gases are likely to be hitting at slightly different times or slightly different velocities. So there's quite a lot of work involved in setting up. If you can just mirror the turbos and have the same pipe lengths and same positioning relative to the other components in the engine, you'll go a long way to smoothing things out and making things a lot easier for that to work. Then you've got the sequential 
twin turbo setup. So this is where the turbos come on stream at different times. So manufacturers typically will put a smaller turbo on first to minimize the lag, spool up. And then as the exhaust gases start flowing more readily, the second larger turbo will come on stream. So when it comes to sequential turbo setups, there really are quite a lot of options out there. And it would be a mistake for me to just highlight one as an example. Typically, you will have the output of one turbo feeding through a turbo that's slightly larger in sequence, and this will further compress that charge. Now, whether the exhaust gases are simultaneously flowing through both turbos, whether there's a wastegate control that's bypassing one turbo to feed into the other, and then that bypass opens when the engine reaches a certain RPM or load condition, and that second turbo can start to spool up. And what happens to the air after it's been through this compound turbo is often up to manufacturers to do slightly different things. So some setups seem to work quite well and others you have problems with. So would you retire the smaller turbo and just switch over to the larger turbo? Would you keep both on at the same time? Well, they're really questions for the manufacturer and the engine designer and what the overall power characteristics and aims are. And there's a, an element here that is quite interesting. You're talking about compound compression of the intake charge. But if the second turbo is compressing the already compressed air from the first turbo, you get much more. So let's just break it down. Now, we're obviously assuming in these examples that there are no real world losses and that everything is working perfectly, but it's just really to explain the concept of compound charging and the benefits that you get, which exceed really the sum of the components that you're using. Let's assume the first compressor is compressing at a ratio of two. The second compressor increases the ratio by four. So to find the total pressure increase, we need to multiply the pressure ratio. So two times four is eight. So we've now got a compression factor of eight when both turbos are used simultaneously. So the challenges you've got is really avoiding a power spike. You need to make the transition as smooth as possible, and that is relatively tricky to do. So some manufacturers may decrease the exhaust gas flow to the, the smaller turbo and increase it to the larger turbo and then balance them out and regulate them. It might choke one turbo slightly, so as to balance out the output that you're getting from the turbos. But you obviously need to be fairly meticulous in the way that these twin turbos are set up so they work in tandem of each other and they just feel like one unit. You don't want to sense that change where the second turbo kicks in. You want that to be a fairly smooth transition. So it's generally the exhaust gases that go into the turbo that generate the power and by controlling those exhaust gases you control the turbo and the power it's producing. So you need some sort of wastegate control that can divert the exhaust gases between the two turbos to make them effective and work together. So you need some sort of boost controller to just balance the flow of exhaust gases through the different turbochargers. So if you want to know more and you want me to go into more of the complexities of twin turbos and parallel turbos and sequential and compound turbocharging, let me know in the comments and I'll put together a video. So if you've got one in your car and you're looking to upgrade the power, you may well have the option of converting from a sequential into a parallel setup, choosing different size turbos, um, or just changing the way the turbos come on stream and getting more boost from them. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. We appreciate all the support we get. All of the comments that you make on our videos are read and greatly appreciated, helping us to put out better quality content and certainly to refine our understanding and our audience's understanding of all of these relatively complex topics. So please subscribe if you haven't done so. We would love you to stay tuned. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find interesting if you're into turbos. Thanks for watching.